Hello and welcome to another edition of PKIM Lab Screencast. I'm Jeff Yarger and today I want to introduce using Gauss View to start Gaussian calculations and a first example of uh, creating a molecule and optimizing its structure as a way to start any type of energy, thermochemistry, vibrational calculation, etc. You have to get the molecule you want built and optimize its structure so that it's in an energy uh, minimum state, uh, typically in the gas phase. So, but before we jump into Gaussian and uh, our inner our uh, graphical user interface through Gauss View, and I'm on a Macintosh computer. I want to uh, quickly introduce the example we're going to do, and this is one that will help uh, students um, interested in calculating thermochemistry calculations. We do it at Arizona State University in Chemistry 343 uh, as part of a bomb calorimetry experimental lab where we also use electronic structure calculations to calculate some thermochemical properties. Specifically, um, here uh, for naphthalene, they measure in class, you'll use a bomb calorimeter to measure the heat of combustion. And the heat of combustion of solid naphthalene uh, plus oxygen gas to form CO2 gas and, and liquid water is by definition what uh, you'll be measuring as the heat of combustion. Um, what you can calculate fairly easily in electronic structure calculation is all gas phase. So we can calculate the energy associated with a, um, a molecule of naphthalene or any uh, isomer of, of naphthalene, uh, the energy of oxygen, and the energy of the products, which are CO2, and, and in this case, gaseous water. So you can see two discrepancies here. We're calculating gaseous water, not liquid water. We're using gaseous, uh, a molecule in the gas phase of, of naphthalene, uh, not solid naphthalene, which is uh, what it is at room temperature and pressure that we start with. But by looking up the heats of sublimation, um, which will give us the uh, gas to solid and uh, the heat of, of vaporization of water and the heat of sublimation of uh, naphthalene, we can then, you know, uh, convert this using that these are uh, the enthalpies and or uh, internal energies, whichever one you calculate, are state functions. So, um, so in a sense, we could use these to calculate Gauss, uh, Gaussian calculations. Now, setting up simple molecules like CO2, water, there's lots and lots of examples. I'm going to focus today on just setting up and optimizing uh, naphthalene, um, you know, and getting it going for thermochemistry calculations. So the second thing I want to say is, is that besides doing naphthalene, we're not experimentally going to do any other isomers, just naphthalene. However, in quantum mechanical calculations, we can run all the uh, isomers we want. And so uh, as part of uh, Chemistry 343, we often have students also calculate another isomer of naphthalene, which is azaline. And it's shown here, instead of two six-membered rings, it's a seven and a five-membered ring. And uh, following this nice Journal of Chemical Education article, which compares naphthalene to azaline, so instead of calculating the gas phase and calculating the delta H of everything, like I just showed you in the handout. This one uh, article basically calculates energies. It doesn't even worry about uh, the overall units, energies for naphthalene, energies for azaline, and then takes the difference between them so it can calculate the different types of energy, you know, it's electronic, tr uh, translational, rotational, vibrational, and total energy states. Um, it can do that for naphthalene and azaline with a bunch of different types of uh, theory at, at a semi-empirical level as well as a Hartree-Fock level and, and um, density functional uh, theory level here. And then it can take the difference between these to get delta H's. So it's telling you which one uh, is, is more stable between naphthalene and azaline. And so students will often do this as well. So as a, a preamble to both of these type of things, whether it's calculating um, the gases for oxygen and CO2 water and naphthalene, or whether it's calculating the difference between just naphthalene in the gas phase and azaline in the gas phase, like is done in this Journal of Chemical Education article, we first need to be able to get uh, naphthalene or azaline molecules into Gaussian for calculations. So uh, I have Gaussian 09 and Gauss View 5 installed on my Macintosh uh, computer. It's a MacBook Pro. Um, and the nice thing about Gaussian is at Arizona State University, we have a site license, so anyone can install it on their computers. Uh, it works on both uh, 
Mac, PC, and Linux. Uh, on Windows, we, we have the Gaussian 03 uh, and Gaussian 4 uh, versions available as a site license. For Macintosh, we have Gaussian 09, Gaussian 5, and I want to say for Linux, we have uh, Ga Gaussian 9 and Gaussian 5 as well. So it works on all major operating systems, um, and it has a really nice... Um, uh, graphical interface, etc. So this can also be done in programs like freeware programs like games and NWKIM, etc. I'm going to focus our example today on, on Gaussian. So uh, when you bring it up, it brings up a new, you know, um, uh, a new molecular group where you can basically create a molecule so that you don't have to list its XYZ parameters or Z matrix directly. You can use a builder to build it and then uh, you can go into the calculation program to set up a specific calculation. So GaussView is a wonderful front end for the setting up input decks or the, what you want Gaussian to calculate. And it also then reads the output from Gaussian and lets you have a summary of some of the results. Not all, but some of the results in the log file. Um, so let's uh, look at quickly. Uh, first, you have all the elements where you can add elements one at a time. So I could come in here and add carbon atoms. Um, uh, and I could even, uh, once I've added them, I could, you know, bring them closer together, uh, make them bonded together, uh, bring them closer. make them bonded, bring them closer. So now I've made, you know, I can get rid of some of those hydrogens. Um, so, and I got rid of one of my bonds, but I can get that back. So here we go. So now um, I've made a, a cyclopropane uh, molecule. And, and once I've drawn a molecule like that, I could go up to something like Gaussian setup. And you know you can imagine what I've drawn here is nowhere near an optimized structure. So I could go to optimization. Um, Again, you have a lot of different parameters. I'm not going to go through a, a lot of them except to say you can calculate force constants. You can optimize with several different type of optimization uh, routines, etc. I will say something here, which is we're often just calculating ground state. We're not doing excited state uh, molecules unless you're doing a lot of spectroscopy. And more importantly, right here, we have a whole bunch of different levels of theory. And it basically goes from the simplest to the uh, more complex. And as you go, from mechanical, which runs very, very fast, same with semi-empirical, to Hartree-Fock, which is the first ab initio, self-consistent field, to density functional theory, to Mol-Placid, etc. These get more and more complicated and take into account more and more uh, at an ab initio level of, of quantum uh, theory. Um, I would strongly advise when you're starting this to stay at the semi-empirical or the Hartree-Fock level because the calculations will go very, very fast and allow you to kind of play around before you uh, start doing that. And so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to stay at a semi-empirical level, uh, the default spin system, and the two very common ones are AM1 and, and PM3. I'm going to just start with PM3. Um, and we could give it a title, etc., cetera, but, but there's really no need um, and, and it gives a lot to add connectivity to do po polarizabilities if you're doing Raman, you know, to have initial guesses, to add solvation to it, uh, to give it titles, etc. So, so you have a lot that you can do here. Now, we're going to submit this as a Gaussian job. And what I'm going to do is, um, and this is very important, is it, by default it goes to slash application slash GV. You don't have read-write permission typically to that applications folder. That's a root uh, for all users on the system. So I'm going to go to my home directory and save it there. And this is one of the more common reasons that people uh, have a problem when they're doing Gaussian calculations is that they start reading and writing to places they don't. So I made on the desktop here uh, a Gaussian test directory and I'm going to uh, save my input in there and by default it'll save the output. And we're going to call this optimization using PM3 for um, 
cyclopropane, which I'll just do as CP, and I'll just call it one in case we do more than that. I'll save that. It'll uh, ask me if I want to start calculating. Uh, I could even look at my activity monitor here, and you can see there's the Gaussian one running, and now it's done. Um, when I'm done, the check file is intermediate. I can The log file is the final output file, and I can even read intermediate geometries. And this is important if you want to look at the optimization results. So I can read that, and this is how it started as a molecule, and I can progressively watch what it did to optimize that structure. And it went through several iterations you know, to optimize that structure. And I can even look at that as kind of an optimization chart here. And so I can start at the highest energy, which is basically what I gave it. And then I can watch it, you know, decrease its energy as it, you know, changes structure here. And it tries several different things till it finally gets to, you know, a low energy state here. And so this is the optimized structure for cyclopropane. Okay. And if you didn't click the intermediate geometries, you wouldn't be able to see this kind of energy plot as it goes along. It would just show you um, the final result. So this is the initial. This was our initial input that we put in, just something we drew and wasn't very optimized. If you get the bonds way too close together, uh, et cetera, if I get two carbons way too close, it won't run the calculation. You have to start with something somewhat reasonable. But again, if I just went and opened the log file here, for um, my cyclo, so that's the input, output is log. Um, I can open that without reading intermediate geometries, and then it doesn't, it doesn't even give me a chance to look at the optimization, it just shows me the final result. Now, keep in mind, what is this reading? Well, what it's actually reading is, um, I'm going to open this in a text editor so you can see all of this is the output. And so Gaussian provides a lot of output detail and at the end it even tells you it took five seconds to run, it terminated normally, and if we start probing up we'll see uh, the, the orientations for the molecule, the distance for everything, etc. in this optimization and it has all the intermediate geometries in here. And so you can start going through the output as well. Okay. That was a quick first example. I'm going to actually just kind of close both of these, open a new one, create a molecule, and let's move on to what we said, which is to look at some rings. So besides elements, we can we have a whole bunch of different ring structures here that we can look at. In fact, it has naphthalene directly. So I can put naphthalene in here. Um, and you can see it's it's already basically optimized. However, you have to make sure it's, uh, if you want to really make sure it's optimized, you can run an optimization program. And what we're going to do is actually just kind of come in here and, you know, um, mess up a few of the bonds a little bit, shrink the distance, uh, maybe uh, do one of the angles and, you know, bow it out a little bit, you know, um, okay, so we're basically, you know, just torquing this molecule a little bit just so it has, so we can see now it's, it's drawn not so perfectly. Um, and again, we can come up to, to calculate Again, the job type we want to do, say, an um, uh, optimization calculation uh, method. You know, by default, it usually picks Hartree-Fock ground state. We're going to, again, go to a semi-empirical to make this uh, very fast. Um, and we'll call this opt of PM3 for naphthalene. One, save. Uh, we already did that once, but I'm going to do it again. And so I can start that calculation, and usually uh, fairly quickly it'll be done here. And I can, again, read the intermediate geometries. And so now I can look at that optimization where it started here. That's the initial input. It optimized it fairly quickly to get to back to its optimization structure. Okay. So, 
Um, uh, I think this gives you an initial uh, idea of how to set something up. Um, I will say real quickly, when you're setting up something like Azaline, what I typically do is um, go to the ring structures here. You can kind of get close with, so this is a, what, a six and a five. So that's pretty close to what we want. Um, we want that five member ring. We want this to be a seven member ring. So I can basically come in here and add a carbon there. Um, get rid of some of these hydrogens. Uh, come in here and squeeze that out and get rid of that bond. And then create a bond here and create a bond here. Okay, that's not looking very good to start with, and, and it's potential that that's so out of whack it'll crash. We might have to get a little bit more optimization, but let's just try it and see where we end up. Uh, so again, you know, we, we just want to do an optimization, and I'm going to uh, do it with a fairly, with a semi-empirical MP3. Um, and see if it gets anywhere with this. Azaline, so optimize. Uh, PM3 method of uh, AZ azaline and uh, we'll do two because I've already done this once before um, and uh, you know like I said if, if it gets too far out of whack it'll crash this one looks like it's actually going to run um, and so uh, yeah it made it through the calculation I'm going to read the intermediate geometries so that's what it started with it didn't like bonding that and Let's look at the results. So it quickly, you know, moved that molecule around and did some pretty weird things here. Okay, and didn't come up with what we wanted as the final structure at all. So this just shows you how your initial input can greatly affect um, you know, some of the results. So uh, we're going to have to try that one again, where we uh, get these molecules a little closer to its optimized geometry before um, it's going to let us do it. And, and I've run out of time on this video, but I think you can see how you could use some of these tools to adjust the angles and stuff and get this thing to optimize into a right structure. I'll be back soon to give you some further examples with Gaussian and Gaussview.